Hi everybody, this is Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. And in today's video, we're gonna shear Arthur a little bit. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already, that way you always get our Angora Rabbit videos. We have started shearing Arthur maybe about a week ago and Arthur wasn't finished. So this time we have to go back and we have to finish shearing Arthur. If you're watching this video because you need help with shearing your rabbit, don't worry, I have a couple different options for you. The Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC YouTube page, if you have subscribed to it, there's tons of free rabbit grooming videos on there for you. If you need a little bit more help than that, that's okay too. We offer the Razzle Dazzle Shearing Method. It is a live video course. It's in three sessions. It's Saturday at 10 central time. The next three session course, it's July 11th, July 18th, and July 25th. They are a half an hour of instruction and 10 minutes of questions. And so you can always, it's video and audio back and forth. So it's pretty cool because you can um, bring your rabbit with you and I can see what's going on with your rabbit and we can problem solve and actually go through the razzle dazzle shearing method with your rabbit to help you. We also have, if you're interested in something uh, sooner than that, we have the uh, How to Shear Your Rabbit, the Razzle Dazzle Shearing Method book. It's available at Amazon.com. It's in paperback and ebook version. You can also go to RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com and the ebook is available there. So let's get shearing. Hello, Arthur. Hello. Let's get you finished. So we didn't blow Arthur's coat before this shearing. This is just how his coat naturally is. And he's doing quite well. He's got a bit of hay, quite a bit of debris. We feed all sorts of different things. This is part of a pine cone seed. My hands are a little wet because I just washed my hands and I did forget to put lotion on. So that's no good, but that's all right. We will get through it. So we trimmed a little bit up the sides of Arthur's cheek the last time we trimmed him and we started trimming under the bib, but we never finished. And Arthur's gonna need his little nails trimmed too. So Arthur's a little dirty under here. We want to see a nice clean rabbit. Um, normally Arthur gets his toenails trimmed when he is standing on the fours on the ground or on the whew, on the table. But right now we'll just shear um, goodness, not shear, we'll trim his toenails laying on his back because he'll be just fine. A little bit off that one. We don't forget this Duclaw. This one will go long. We'll just take any nail debris that fell on him, which was a few little chunks, click it off, take it off. There we go. So we trimmed up this arm of Arthur's, but we still have to trim up this arm. So we have our scissors, and we're just gonna snip a little bit here and there, a little bit of webbing starting on this section. Sometimes if you trim a rabbit and then you do what I did where you have a very, you have the long wool section and then you have a shorter section where it's trimmed, the this will mat where it's close to the um, section that was 
kept along. But we're just going to keep trimming small sections. Arthur's typically very good with shearing because he's had his wool shorn many times. It's one of the benefits of having and keeping a rabbit and having an older rabbit who has been shorn and shorn well because they are okay then. They often don't jump around. They're more patient. Than the younger ones. The younger ones are typically a little bit more wild and feisty. Just because they're they're young, they don't really know yet. A little bit of matting on Arthur's back feet here. don't want that we don't want we don't like any any matting but it's quite common for rabbits to have matting where there's friction and where there's movement so any place where there's a rabbit moves around quite a bit for example uh, their their armpits that's a place for matting grown in quite a bit already. Always be careful they have some angles and thin skin. It can be easy to cut the rabbit with the scissors. I don't use anything special for scissors. I always use the same pair of Westcott titanium five inch scissors. I always make sure they're sharpened before I'm shearing. Use my Fiskars scissors sharpener. It's always the same thing over and over. And I don't mind the repetition. This is just a bit webbed. It's not fully matted. That's a little bit more matting. But if it's just webbed a little bit, I can still keep that wool and salvage it. All right. We'll work a little bit on the other foot here. Make it a little bit more ruly. I don't do much with the foot hair on these bunnies. Just kind of keep it trimmed. Sometimes this is, if this gets a little bit long, I'll trim it, but I do not trim it all the way down. And if it's still short and doing well, I won't trim it on their feet. Padding is good on the feet. These, the ends of these particular scissors can be, they're pointed, they're pointy. So being delicate with where they touch, the rabbit skin is important. If 
right in the undertail area sometimes is quite sensitive for rabbits, especially bucks. They have quite a bit going on. You have to be careful. I don't usually talk much when shearing. Typically shearing is not stressful for me. It's more of a relaxing time. Just time I get to spend cleaning up my bunny, making sure everything's okay. Not really time to be loud or not really time to have too much chaos. Our bunnies don't appreciate that. We're by some of his male parts, which means we must certainly be careful. Very thin skin again. Definitely don't want to cut where we are. We don't want to cut something that's not wool. And that can happen. And sometimes rabbits move when we're trying to shear them. You know, you can see uh, Arthur, he does jump a bit. It doesn't, that does not completely go away. He's still aware, he's still responding, he can, you know, he can still pull his feet back. Just little by little, small cuts. Pay attention to the sound of the scissors, they tell us a lot. never anything wrong with taking your time shearing your rabbit. Nothing wrong with it. It's better to go slow, get a good safe shearing in then to go fast and end up hurting your rabbit. Slow is okay. Uneven is okay. We are okay with all of that. This little foot kind of goes in the way here. He's kind of crunched up a little bit. Arthur's half English, he's half German. He's completely wonderful. He is a very social rabbit. And he passes that personality on to the majority of his offspring. The majority are quite nice, good little temperamented bunnies. We separate as we go with our wool. So, Arthur's a longer bunny. I love the color of his wool. He's a black tortoise shell. He's Vienna marked. Just means he carries the Vienna gene and he has that kind of big white blaze on his face.
little bit too over. Go back in this area, the man parts under the tail. We can see where his tail is, which is nice to see because I always want to avoid cutting the tail. It can happen. Tail can get cut and so we have to be careful. Make sure we know where that little tail is of theirs. Certainly don't want to cut it. This side, trim up a little bit more in that back tail section area on the other side of the bunny, Mr. Arthur. Arthur has really just absolutely great wool. It's absolutely a joy to spin. My favorite wool to spin is Arthur's. So I've said it before. I'm Kind of selfish with this wool. I don't, I really don't sell his wool for anyone else to spin. I keep it and I spin it myself. His yarn is for sale after I've spun it, but his, his raw wool is really not, not for sale. It's got a little bit under here. We've got a shear. We'll move Mr. Arthur around a bit to get a better access of that. I want him a little bit stretched out here just so we can get we can get where we want to go. Arthur's still doing good. That's what we like to see. We don't want anyone struggling. Bunnies calm down as they get older. Arthur was quite an energetic little dude when he was younger. And as he matures and keeps aging, he calms down a little bit. Not that he was unruly before by any means. A bit of a mat in the armpit area, very normal. We'll start at the top on this paw. We need to be able to see a bit better into what we're cutting. It can be difficult if visibility is poor due to wool. a little bit on Arthur's paws. I don't don't trim it off. Don't trim it all off. It's it's still springtime here. It is not yet summer. And so I the nights can still get cold. Arthur has some hay trapped in here. You can see a little bit of matting. And no surprise that in the matting there's bits of hay. Bits of hay and debris. Hay and debris can certainly cause matting. Very normal. And when there's matting, we just use the tip of the scissors. Get at those, 
get at those mats. Small, small clips. Takes time, but it keeps your keeps your bunny safe. Keeps you safe. And that's what we want. We want a good, good shearing. Mats, if you leave a mat, it'll grow on itself. The wool next to it gets invited to become part of the mat party, and then it's then it's all, all done with, and everybody gets matted up. Mat just kind of grows and grows on itself. Some of it's webbed, some of it's matted under the armpit. A little bit to the side here still. You ready to flip over? There. If Arthur wants a break, that's okay. He can have a break. We can still reach up underneath while he's on all fours and kind of taking a break. And keep shearing up this back, back hip area. Good wool. Arthur still has guard hair, certainly. He's not, um, without, which helps make his coat manageable. Doesn't matter as much. You can take bigger chunks, take bigger cuts of wool. In the back, it's often people find it easier to shear the back of a rabbit rather than the under tail or the bib area. It's quite normal to struggle in those areas. Hey dude, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You have a little bit of eye booger. There. Big good boy. Okay, we've got that Tail. We want to keep that little tail out of the way there. We don't want to cut that. He wants to bring that tail up. And we want to keep that tail out of the way. We know it's a beautiful tail, but we don't want it by our scissors. Very thick, thick, thick wool. I just move around to whichever position I need to. To see the best. And to get at the wool I want to clip here. There's that little tail in the way again.
very thick wool back here. So while they were cutting handfuls of wool, it doesn't, doesn't always seem like we're making a lot of progress because there's so much to cut. But as long as you just keep going and keep going and keep going, and you eventually start seeing more progress. Arthur is not the biggest buck I've ever owned, but that's in part due to, because he's part English. If it was colder out, then we would leave the strip on the back for Arthur. <sighs> oh, Arthur. Let's see what we can do here. We'll move on up. Move on up. Because we trimmed underneath, we can see quite well where we're trimming. Arthur will definitely appreciate being without all his heavy, heavy wool. All right, what do we got here? A little bit of that bib up front. This side, hi, you have a little eye booger. A little crusty. That happens. That happens. That happens. Arthur has been playing with two different kinds of pine cones, apple sticks, cattails, dandelions. He has been very busy in his pen. Re he rearranges all of that as well. He has lots of treats and toys. Lots of 
lots of things to keep him occupied. We're gonna have to flip him over and do his, his belly a little bit better here. He's got a bit still left. Let's see if we can, what we can get on this side. But since he's content, we'll just do what we can before we flip them over. All right, Arthur, are you ready? Are you ready? You're feeling good. You're feeling good. There. Hello, dude. All right, let's get this belly done. Get them all cleaned up real nice. bit of that mat, mat that grew under his armpit. I don't see a lot of dander, which is good. I see a bit of hay debris. Normal. Just take my time. Around the side, coming up, going up his belly. A little bit of webbed wool. We'll slowly separate anything out. Sorry, quickly separate anything out. We don't want to. That we can do fast. We don't have to sort our wool slow. All right. It's as much as we need to trim under the side on that side. We have extra wool kind of hanging out everywhere here. Now let's get that other side done. Under the belly. And we just trim up slowly. Just keep going. If Arthur wants to flip over, he can flip over. He's done this enough times, he knows. knows how to behave in just polite bunny manners. And get some more visibility here. Up his 
shoulder. Some of that's a mat, some of it's not. I think, I think that's really it. Hi, hi. And let's put you down on the towel. This section goes really fast. Even when we even when we trim slow, this is a fast, fast section, this last section up here. You want to take a look if ever you see that we know this is hay, but if ever you see um, movement, if any of the brown specks are moving, then that is not hay. That would be fleas. If they're moving around, hopping around, small tiny brown flecks. Get a good look at them. You likely can see a flea's legs. You'll likely have a lot of uh, smaller brown flecks that are waste from a flea. So that has to be treated if you're if your bunny has fleas. Arthur does not. Kind of laying on his, laying on his side here. The side I need to get to. Almost done. Quite a bit. Oh, this is from Arthur. This is from a different bunny, that teeny bit. This is the waste of the shearing that we don't want, the wool we don't want. And then we have the dude. Yes. Often if Arthur's wool gets long, it can bother his eyes. Any rabbit that has wool, long wool by the eyes. What do you think? What do you think, dude? Yes, you're such a good bunny. He loves the side of his face. Scratched. So that's our video. Thanks for watching us complete the shearing on Arthur. And make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go.